What's going on, football fans? It's me, J.R. Clark, back again with another rendition of the Falcon Eye View. Today, in honor of it being Rush Week, as we called it on uh, the Draft House, I figured I would carry that over into the Falcon Eye View this week. And kind of like I did with the safety position last week, I want to take a look at some uh, potential free agent pass rushers that the Atlanta Falcons might want to take a look at. Uh, so... Without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. Now, obviously, we're not going to be able to get into any like high price guys, right? I mean, right now we're still struggling to get under the salary cap as it is. But I believe that they're going to do it. They're going to get under the salary cap. They're going to be able to sign their draft picks. And I think they're going to be able to sign a handful of uh, lower tier free agents. Uh, so, and that aspect that's what i that's what i went to look at right there's no sense in you know trying to sign even though he's already signed but you know a jj watt you know because we just wasn't gonna have the cap space to do that so after looking at the uh, you know spotrack website to see who is going to be a free agent and who i thought we could get you know in our price range uh these are some of the guys that i come up with Obviously, it's not going to be, you know, a Matt Judon, you know, but I think uh, these guys, for the defensive staff that we have, I think these guys could come in and play a good, solid role. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and start. And we're going to start with a guy who is, you know, he's got a soft spot in my heart, right? When I saw that he was coming up as a... Uh, free agent I was like oh cool maybe you know maybe we can get this guy because I liked him coming out of college this is when I like really really started to uh, pay attention to the nuts and bolts of trying to build a team but uh, anyway the guy I'm talking about is Jeremiah Tauchu. Uh it seems like he's been in the league forever but he's still only 28 years old so he's got a you know a, like one good contract left in and one good like uh, like four year five year contract so to speak uh, left in him. He went to uh, Georgia Tech. Obviously, he stands six foot three, two hundred fifty two pounds, and I believe in a uh, three four system he is a perfect outside linebacker. Not perfect, but he's your prototypical outside linebacker, and he's had. Uh, some decent production, career total of 20 and a half sacks. He had five sacks last season. Uh, his career high was six sacks in 2015 for San Diego. Uh, but like I said, he got back up to five last year uh, being used in, in Denver. Uh, the past two years, that's where he's been, three and a half sacks, five sacks. Uh, tackles for loss which is something that I look at because tackles for loss show me that you're active in the in the run game as well. Um, this is one of the things that, that really popped out at me. He had nine tackles for loss. No, excuse me, that's QB hits. He had six tackles for loss uh, this past season, uh, which, I mean, his best production was uh, in 2015, obviously. But I, I'm not saying he could get back to that, but for a decently priced uh, partner for Dante Fowler, who I think will be here this coming year. I think Jeremiah Tauchu, uh is a good, solid player who could produce well uh, in the system that I believe the Atlanta Falcons are going to run. So let's take a look at this first play. Man, I, my nose is itching like crazy. All right, anyway. So let's take a look at this first, pre first play. In this play, it is... A run stop, okay? But I want you to watch the, the effort here. He's number 97. He initially gets shoved out, you know, tracked up by the tight end. But he he's able to disengage and get back to the running back before he makes any gains. So let's take a look at that one more time. Number 97 right there on the end. Two-point stance, outside linebacker. Gage locks up with the tight end. He's able to get away from him and track down the running back. That is is definitely the type of play that I like and what I'm looking for. Too many times I saw, you know, when some other guys that we've had here in the past, they initially get locked out of the play and they just kind of give up, right? Uh, they don't seem to, to continue fighting. Uh, what I really liked and what stood out to me with a um, Jeremiah Tauchi was how much he actually kept fighting. 
and and that was real good. I hope my I'm looking at my my levels here, my, my audio levels. I've had some people complain. So I'm I'm hoping that I have fixed them. So we'll see. Anyway, continuing on. Now, I'd be remiss. I can't show you a pass rusher without showing you a sack. So here is a sack from same game. What I love is look at that stunt. I absolutely love that. Look at it from a different angle here. He fakes that outside, loops back in, and just explodes through that hole. And that is something that I absolutely enjoy. Watch it again here. Comes out and just comes around and buries him. That was a stunt run to perfection. And I think that's something that Mr. Pease is probably going to do quite a bit and has done used quite a bit in the past. I don't see any reason why he would change now. So that is uh, something that caught my eye that he was able to run that stunt, you know, to perfection like that. So again, I think, like I said, I think you could have, you know, you could get Jeremiah Tauchu for, you know, decent price. Um, I think his current salary is just a million, right? So you might be able to get him for a little bit north of uh, veterans minimum. Uh, especially if you're giving him some some guarantees. Um, so I believe he's a guy that can definitely be had. All right, well, moving right along from Jeremiah Tauchu, uh, like I said, personal favorite. Uh, we're going to go to another guy who really caught my eye, uh, younger fella. <clears throat> he's uh, played on a not good uh Jets defense, but he's coming off of his you know, rookie contract. There's no telling if the new regime up there, if he's a guy that's going to fit their type of play style. Um, I think they're going to be installing more of a, a 4-3, and he seems to be more of a, maybe more of a 3-4 outside linebacker. Could be wrong on that one. He's listed as, as a defensive end, but he's also played uh, uh, outside linebacker. Uh, so, Anyway, this is a uh, Terrell Basham, out of who played for the Jets. He stands six foot four, two hundred sixty six pounds. Uh, like I said, played on a not great Jets team. Has a career total of seven and a half sacks with um, four forced fumbles. So he, like I said, another aspect of being active, coming off of a three and a half sack season. None of these guys are going to blow your skirts away. Like none of these guys are going to blow you away. But that's why I think that these guys can be had for a decent price. And then with some different, you know, change of scenery, may be able to come in and produce. Um, he had five uh, five tackles for loss, 13 QB hits, um, you know, 36 total tackles. Nothing real big there. Like I said, three forced fumbles, one pass defense. Um, his stats don't necessarily scream. He seems like a one- or two-year uh, candidate. As far as contracts go, maybe, like I said, change of scenery, change of uh, uh, coaching styles may produce better outcomes for him. But what I did like about uh, Basham is that he was, you know, like I said, he's active in the run game. And I think that's important because a lot of times we get caught up in sacks. Um, but more importantly, he's like, I want to feel your effect on the field. That's, that's more or less where I'm at. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this play here, slow motion, because, you know, it's cool. And his initial, he initially gets stonewalled, right? So let's go back and look at that. He's rushing out, boom, sees he gets locked off. And it's almost like a stunt. And that's stunts are ways to, you know, get guys who can't, like it, it's the, Stunts and twists are the scheming a guy open for a receiver, right? Stunts and twists are the defensive version of rub routes. So I'm looking for a guy who can perform those well because that's a way to manufacture rush lanes. And I think that that's something that uh, Pease is going to you know, attempt to do to maximize talent, which is probably one reason why you've seen guys like Paul Kruger and Pernell McPhee do well under Pease and then go somewhere else and not shine because they don't run the same type of system. They don't scheme their guys open is, is the best way to put that, right? 
So Terrell Basham is a guy who, like I said, I found uh, to be interesting. He was a third overall pick for the Indianapolis Colts. They traded him to uh, uh, the Jets. I don't exactly remember what that trade was for, but uh, I think he's a guy who can come in and be given a chance to rekindle his career. Like I said, you give him a, a low-risk deal and see what he comes in and can do, right? If Vic Beasley only got a two-year deal last year from the Titans, I can't see Basham commanding a ton of money. So this is a guy who I think you can bring in and and get more production out of. So that's Terrell Basham. Now, moving on, moving right along to our last bargain bin barrel kind of guy. I guess you could say, again, another guy who was drafted in the 2017 draft. Um, that's the draft class that's coming into free agency this year. Um, another third-round pick by the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, is Dwayne Smoot. He uh, played in Illinois. Um, he has a pretty good buzz coming out of college. I remember like wanting him, but uh, obviously Jacksonville took him. Uh, just is, what, 26 years old? Um, not exactly sure what kind of system Urban Meyer is going to run. I know uh, Jacksonville's got the money to uh, afford him and keep him. I just don't know if it's a guy that Urban Meyer is going to want to keep. Like you have regime changes there, and with regime, regime changes, guys, uh, like quality guys, get cut and get let go and don't get re-signed. So this is a guy who has 11 and a half career sacks in the NFL and two forced fumbles and just overall solid you know, production. Last year alone, he had 17 QB hits, five tackles for loss. Um, like I said, two forced fumbles, five and a half sacks. I mean, he's not high sack production, six sacks uh, last year or not last year, but the year before last, five and a half last year. So he's just, he's a productive player. And I think he's a guy that, um, we could get a lot out of and potentially could get for, you know, decent money, like, like contract team friendly contract wise. So let's take a look at Mr. Smoot. I have a couple plays to look at him because I just watching him. I enjoyed the way he played. He seemed like a guy who was just hard nosed, you know, come in, did his work, kind of like your atypical lunch pail type guy is what he seemed like on tape. So his first play is a run play, so, you know, run stop. So let's take a look at it. He's number 94. All right, here it goes. And what I liked about this play is that he was blocked by, let's run that back one more time. Uh, hold on. Boom. He's on the edge there, and he's being blocked by a tight end and, I believe, a fullback. And he fights through both of them to take down Dalvin Cook, which is not an easy tackle to begin with. So I really enjoyed, you know, seeing that him fighting through those blocks and is able to bench press that tight end off of him uh, to make the tackle. So that was a, uh, and I saw plays like that, um, him showing you that strength that he has. I mean, he's 6'3", 264. He's a big you know, strong fella. So uh, I liked seeing that effectiveness, right? So I'm gonna I got two sacks I want to show you. One of them is I mean it's an effort sack. This first one is just nothing but an effort sack. But I like that, especially coming off of two high profile guys who didn't always show you a ton of effort in, you know, Beasley and McKinley. So watching a guy out there just earning it. I loved it, right? He's he's right there on the edge. He initially gets blocked out of the play. Now, Cousins holds on to the ball, and that's why he gets the sack. But the fact that he just kept at it, I'll show you that one more time. The fact that he just keeps fighting, keeps his head in the play. I mean, I don't know how many guys who would just take off when, you know, that offensive lineman dumps them at the end there. You know, dumps them out of the play. They can just start loafing, but no. Keeps his head up. He realizes Kirk Cousins still got the ball, and he goes after him and gets the sack. Now, this next sack I'm going to show you is a product of, and obviously I can't show you 
all the film, but he had been setting this tackle up for a lot of the game. He had been going outside, 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 and he finally uh, jumped inside. And when he jumped inside, like as the ball was snapped, that he had lulled that offensive tackle into such a false sense of security that that tackle just went ahead and went outside, you know. And it was it allowed Smoot to jump back inside and, and get a good, nice, clean release. So watch him here. He's on, he's on the edge again. You see, that tackle just goes out, and Smoot just beats him inside right off the rip. And it's like it was good to see a guy with a plan, right? You could see him, oh, I've been doing this. I've been hitting that guy outside, hitting that guy out. And, you know, he come back inside. And, and that was, I want you to see this again. He goes, boom, right inside, gives him that shoulder, a little bit of a uh, that rip move, you know, that little, you know, with the, with the shoulder there to disengage. And that was a thing of beauty. And then I like how effective Smoot was. Um, I mean, he's not, I don't think he would be a 10 sack guy, but he'll be, a, you know, a solid compliment, you know, on a defensive line, whether it's to, Dante Fowler or whether it's to a draft pick or whatever, I think Smoot could be your number two punch, you know? So I th those are the guys that, that intrigued me. Those are the guys who I thought you could get for a price that uh, we could afford, you know, this off season, um, you know, whether it be, you know, the elder statesman and Jeremiah Tauchu or one of the two young bucks who might be going under the radar. Um, I think any of those guys could come in and solidify and help solidify a pass rush that has been anemic for years, even though you've thrown some pretty high draft capital at it. So that's what I got for you. Hope y'all enjoyed it today. Uh, as always, y'all can catch me on Twitter. I'm at Grim1128. I hope the audio was better on, on this video. Uh, I know some people were commenting on the last video that my audio is kind of low. Hopefully this one's better. Uh, you can catch us live on uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We just had a draft house yesterday, or not yesterday, the other day. And uh, this coming week we'll have our normally pound-for-pound uh, pound live where we just talk about the team. So, either way, hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks again. As always, Falcons fans, rise up.